I think the part of this experience that has been most enjoyable for me is becoming more acquainted and familiar with Maori culture um, and, and just appreciating uh, how rich it is and, um, and how alive it is. To come and see it alive and, and such a part of the uh, experience of the people um, has been, I think, the most inspiring part to me and to understand the depth of it. Even the haka that was done at the end of uh, the ceremony this evening was just so powerful. So the whole experience, that to me has been the strongest takeaway. And academia a lot of times works in a bubble where we have conversations with each other, we present papers to each other, and we can actually think we're doing really good things. Meanwhile, the problems have not gone away, but we've boosted our careers and we've got more publications. That's not good enough. You know? One of the ways I've survived in academia over the last several years is by always keeping one foot outside. And keeping that one foot out, um, it really means, I don't, you know, it's, it's striking the balanced pose um, of really one foot out. Um, because I think that it's very, sometimes um, you see a lot of university academics who seek affirmation within the university community and never get it. You know, never get it because who they are and what they do is not valued. Um, and therefore they end up becoming neurotic. They end up becoming, um, they lose confidence because of that. Um, and really where we get our affirmation is in our community and in staying connected and, and, and doing work that's meaningful and relevant. And so for me throughout my career, that balance has been um, a source of strength and um, made me feel uh, much more capable of doing work that matters. Now Graham said early on that education was the medicine. But if that's the medicine, some people are getting sick with the medicine. That is because education, we would hope, would be the means through which we break the cycle of poverty, through which we expand opportunity, through which we enhance our ability to resist and to create. But we know that very often, the longer our kids are in school, the less they want to learn. And we know that uh, more often than not, those who don't get those formal degrees are relegated to lives on the margins. And the cycle continues. I think that what's important, and I alluded to it, but it could, that could have been a whole talk in itself, right? Of moving from the margin to the center, right? When you see yourself on the margin, when you see yourself in the minority, when you see yourself as oppressed, you adopt an oppressed mentality and you resist that oppression. But I think as the numbers change, it doesn't mean the challenges go away, but we have to start to change the mindset and really think about what is the role of the Maori going to be in leading the society not just for the Maori, but for all the people in the society. Earlier, there was some talk about Maori studies as being um, kind of the foothold that many uh, Maori scholars established in the university. Well, we need Maori studies in every discipline, right? Because uh, we need to be prepared to be the doctors, the engineers, the planners, the, the leaders of the society. And we need, but we need to do that work with a different mindset. Right? Not the one, not, not the old mindset, but the mindset that it's going to allow us to create a more equitable, more just society in the future. And so that challenge of um, breaking the, the old paradigms so that new ways of thinking, new ways of approaching our problems and the challenges of the 21st century, I see as a, a very important task to take on. <laughs>